Right, the time is 24 minutes to three. And who remembers this? There it is. Good old fashioned. Da- that sounds like Star Wars. Anyway, dial up internet. Remember, becoming increasingly difficult to remember a world without the web. Buying, selling, booking, holidays, keeping in touch with friends, fighting and arguing, social media, Twitter, even this very radio station has loads of stuff on our web pages. Today marks quite a birth to the official 30th anniversary of the original proposal for the World Wide Web. Our reporter Marie Sauvé has been asking people if they remember uh, the uh, time um, BWWW. That was the, the time before the World Wide Web. First, let's say slightly older folk. Oh, I do remember a time before the internet, yes. I remember the birth of computers. Life was simpler. There wasn't all the distraction. You weren't available all the time. It was better for families before this. They were relating more with each other. It is a good tool as well, like, you know, if it's used properly. You know, but I think I think the inventor of the World Wide Web said that it's not being used properly because it's fake news and people are being bullied and all that. I have three kids at the minute and they never get a break from social media and from school and all the pressures that go with that and they never get to do the things that I got to do as a kid, you know, like they're always on their phone. Your phone is everything now, camera, maps, television, everything's on it now, so, you know, why would you go back to a time when there wasn't on it? In some ways it was better, but in other ways information's so available now. But before, things happened that nobody knew anything about. Now if something happens in Australia, within two seconds you know about it in Derry. Now that the internet's in, it's impossible to get bored. So much good stuff on it. And I think it's fantastic, really. So, uh, listen, back to the internet with Professor Curran in a wee moment. Firstly, though, we have confirmation the DUP are saying no. This is just in from the party. We recognise that the Prime Minister has made limited progress in her discussions with the European Union. However, in our view, sufficient progress has not been achieved at this time. Having carefully considered the published material as well as measuring what has been achieved against our own fundamental tests, namely the impact of the backstop on the constitutional and economic integrity of the Union of the United Kingdom, it is clear that the risks remain that the UK would be unable to lawfully exit the backstop were it uh, to be activated. And they blame the EU. This from the EUP. The European Union has been intransigent. Uh, it is possible to reach a sensible deal which works for the United Kingdom and the European Union, but it will require all sides to be reasonable and in deal-making mode. So the DUP aren't backing her deal. One wonders about the mathematics later on this evening. And if it's downed again... What happens then? Have a wee third vote? I should vote about it every month. Till we all sort of get sick of it. We're kind of all sick of it anyway. Anyway, uh, we're back uh, to uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee's uh, creation. Uh, the Enfant Terrible, you might call it. Uh, Mari Sauvé also went to the Tech this morning to have a wee chat with media and journalism students. Younger set of voices, shall we say. Uh, well, let's see if they can remember life before the World Wide Web. And most importantly, could they live without it? Do you remember a time before the internet? I mean, I, I can remember back when I had no access to internet. You know, you just kind of got by with what you had in the house. You might have been able to phone someone or anything, but that was basically your only connection. There was only really about five years of my life where I didn't actually have access to internet. Because I remember at a very young age, our family got like a computer. Like it wasn't very good, it was a big bulky thing, but I was about five whenever I was able to like get access to the internet. So. Not really. <laughs> How old were you when you got your first email address? Ooh, I think I got my first email address for Club Penguin. <laughs> oh. So I was about, I must have been about seven, eight. I suppose it was grand then when you weren't used to it, but then as soon as you started using the internet, everyone became more dependent on it for information. Like, um, we used to like look up encyclopedias and stuff, but now you've just got the internet for that. Do you think it's reliable, the information you find on the web? Uh, not, not particularly, because the problem is with the internet is uh, everyone contributes to it. I mean, I think our generation is one with access to the most knowledge, and yet we're probably one of the most ignorant of the genera- of our any generation. Right? And the, reason, the main reason is, is because I think social media has contributed to a culture, especially among young people, of vanity 
and pretentiousness. I think our entire self-confidence and our egos are just based on how many likes we get and posts and all this nonsense. So I think, I don't, I'm not really sure if the internet's a healthy thing. The web in general, is it's easy access to basically everything. Do you think it's a plus or it's quite negative for society? Um, I think it's actually quite negative that kind of anyone can have access to anything. And it's um, obvious enough there's you know, good parts of it where you can access um, info and everything. But then you've got children bypassing parental controls and having access to things on the internet they really should have. Actually, a few days ago, I was actually on YouTube and there was a video where a guy was saying how much uh, Google knew about him. And there was a link that you could go to, like it was Google, and you could scroll down and see how much actually Google knew about you. So it knew what type of movies I, I like to watch, um, where I work, things like that um, kind of scare me a little bit, like who can have access to that. So in that sense, it is quite scary and I don't think it's good that um, the likes of Google know so much about me. But then it's also good in the sense that you can learn lots of things from it. It's like an encyclopedia just on your on your phone. So in terms of education purposes, it's very good. But again, it's, it's really mixed for me. I, I don't really know what to think of it. Would you consider a life without the internet? I could take up a, a, um, a massive break from social media. I really think it's unnecessary and I think it's actually contributed to the, uh, my generation being very antisocial. Yeah, I think so. Because um, even with like younger members of my family, I don't really think that they know the full dangers of the internet and how far it's actually come in such a short time. It's kind of scary who's out there, but I don't think I could go without it for a long period of time in terms of like my course and stuff. Like I do rely very much so on the internet. Various voices there from the regional college, their media uh, and journalism students listening to that with me is uh, Professor Kevin Curran, Professor of Cybersecurity with uh, Ulster University. Uh, 30 years, Kevin, you and I will be the only generation ever to have one foot in and your kids will never remember pre-internet. I do. And we're the only generation of human history that will ever have a toe in each camp. Yeah, exactly. I just realised I've had the same email address for 28 years. <laughs> um, yeah, 30 years ago today is when Tim Berners-Lee, Sir Tim, presented a proposal to his boss, Mike Sendell, at the CERN, the Research Institute for, you know, for um, Nuclear Research. And um, his boss came back with just one line, really, saying, vague but exciting. <laughs> And then he spent two years developing this. Now, of course, he did study physics at Oxford, but he was a computer scientist. His parents worked on the first commercially available computer, which was a Ferranti Mark I. So he has pedigree, a smart guy, developed it. He was frustrated. It was born out of frustration. He had to go to different computers to access different information. And then he set his mind to work saying, well, why do I have to walk over there to access information? Why can't I just link this information? And that was the key thing about what he developed, the hyperlink, the links that we click on on web pages, because the Internet is different from the World Wide Web. The Internet existed beforehand. It was developed in the, really in the 60s. Um, again, email, the first email was sent in 1971, which was years before it. But there was no such thing as web pages. And that's what he developed, this thing of putting information on and creating hyperlinks and between... And connecting up, basically, the way telephones are connected up. Right? Exactly, and then it reached 50 million in a very short time yeah. of users. And again, it's really a step, it's the, the most um, useful tool, it's the most popular tool that we have on but the internet. He's not convinced 30 years on, 100% about his, you could call it his own phone, terrible. He's been voicing his concerns about problems, Kevin, like data breaches, hacking, misinformation. Says that could and should be tackled, the, the, the thing that the Frankenstein that he ha has created? He does. He says, of course, the governments must tr translate laws um, and regulations for the digital age. Again, he's worried and he sees, like all of us, about the hacking and the harassment. He's fed up with the clickbait models of you know, false information, again, the fake news. He sees all that. And, of course, he's 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 set up a foundation, really, um, a new cyber foundation, really, and he's encouraging governments and legislators to keep the web open but also to address the dark side of it because all technology has a dark side. And I was going to say, you probably had the first computer in Oxford County Galway. Do you remember it? Yeah, I, I do indeed, yeah. It was an <laughs> I, the first, I, it was a home computer. I had a VIC-20, which had 3.5K memory. But 20 yeah, my first PC was back in 1988, and it was an Amstrad. Mm -hmm. So I would have known who Alan Sugar was back then. I was a hero of his well before he ever appeared on TV. What could you do in that? Um, it, had, it didn't have any graphical interface. It had no Windows. 
you boot it into what you would call a command prompt, a black just a dot, and then you could type in programs and of course do that. And there was no such no mouse with that particular 8086 Amstrad PC I had. And I remember the first time I seen a mouse was maybe t- two years later on my work experience when I was um, in my final year of school and being amazed by it. And it was a Windows opera. It was a pre Windows. It was called Gem. But I watched Windows and I watched Windows 95 come along. And there I were watched... Windows arriving. Oh, I do indeed. Clip yeah. art. Yeah. You oh. can stick something on to a poster. Yeah. I was like, what? You know, it but was, the, it was mind, mind-boggling. Yeah, and it's the first PC I used, or the first, yeah, well, it wasn't a PC, the first device I used to access the internet was Steve Jobs' Next Machine, again, which was classed as one of his failures, but it was a pretty cool that one? browser. Um, again, but it's Tim Berners-Lee himself invented the first um, um, search engine, which he called the World Wide Web. And his first names for the World Wide Web were actually Mine of Information or the Information Mine. And we would be calling it that now if he didn't change it to the World Wide Web. Goodness. Um, again, the most users in the world on the web are in China, followed by India, then America. Yeah. And the number of internet-connected devices um, outnumbers the number of humans on the planet. Um, again, it's become central to our lives, really. We can't roll the stone back. So whether we think it's negative or not, there's, we just got to learn to live with the World Wide Web. We got to live with the internet. And, of course, we have to obviously regulate it. We have to, you know, just to be safe online because, because we can't roll back that stuff. But you, I think there'll come a time in a couple, maybe a couple of generations time when, when people will go more uh, off grid they realise you know on their deathbeds maybe or you know that that getting more Facebook likes wasn't the purpose of life or more attention on social media or more Instagram hits or whatever. Maybe. I think people will disconnect from it Kevin. It's still uh, a bit newfangled to us isn't it? Uh, very much. I mean you, you, I, th- I think everyone has to go through a phase of oversharing and then you mature and you realize, hang on, you know, th- this is not really me and I don't need to get those likes again. And, and we are adapting to that. Again, uh, but I, I can't see how we can separate because social networks are, they're so addictive in some ways that mm. we all like to see what our friends are doing and we all like positive feedback. But of course, we've got to balance what we share and to know and separate that a like really doesn't mean that you know, that we, we shouldn't chase those likes, but mm. it's very hard for teenagers especially. And I know teenagers at the moment that they'll delete posts because they didn't get enough likes, that they see themselves reflected in that. But again, they just got to learn and they'll mature into their 20s and their 30s again. I remember this era, but yeah, just your Wayans will never remember this. Anyway, here's a clip from back in the day when it took a whole minute to read out a web address. This is a presenter, Tony Anstis, in the CBBC broom cupboard. We're in 1985 here. We now have a World Wide Web page on the internet so you can access the information yourself if you can get onto the World Wide Web, okay? And if you can, this is our address. I hope you've got a pen and paper ready because as you can see, it's not particularly short. Uh, First of all, to get through to the BBC itself, okay, to get through those walls, uh, you need to type in this first line, HTTP colon, two strokes, www.com bbcnc.org.uk stroke oh. bbc tv stroke oh. children's stroke presentation and once you're there on the world wide web you can access all oh. the information you've ever wanted you, I you think are joking done aren't it you? okay neighbours is on in a minute hey that what is, is that excuse me that is top high tech information stuff what a load right. of, i'm going to need a bigger jotter at this now get over here cool. it's like a game of scrabble that's gone here. wrong shut up <laughs> uh, actually, Tim Berners-Lee's one regret is including www because it's superfluous to need. W- course, could, could it just be if we wanted a w dot? Oh uh, uh, no, no, forget about that. Just have the name of the website appear. Make it bbc.co or bbc.com again. But the www was well, 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 was not needed. So um, why, why do we still use it? Oh, uh, because you don't have to. Like I'm KevinCurran.org on my website. I don't uh, use www. You know. <laughs> Right, uh, best thing about the internet in your life, Kevin. To give, give a couple of three things. Obviously, your academic prowess and your career path and all the rest couldn't have been without it, but the best couple of things in your life about the internet. I'm not having to buy a newspaper anymore. I read them all online. Right. And I've access to it everywhere and just being able to access information and, of course, movies and Netflix and all the content that I need. Just... Mm-hmm being connected all the time but information for me being able to source any research I need just not having to rely on libraries anymore Well I remember being in college and uh, in RE A level there were 12 textbooks and there was 12, even 18 of us and I was going like who got who got there first to get the textbook yeah, I remember just always going to the library for, and booking out for a long time and yeah you're right I remember, yeah, 
exactly. Yeah. Worst things, what, what do you wish uh, wasn't there in terms of social media generation, your experience? Uh, um, I suppose the harassment really and the, um, the adult websites and the things which our children will see. Um, and again, all, I guess in some ways life has become a lot busier now moving off the world where but internet that you always feel you have to reply to emails and you have to check your phone yeah. and I feel He's ignoring me. Yeah. I, I feel pressure. I feel I have to work seven days a week. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I wake up very, very early and it's the first thing I do at five o'clock in the morning is go, right, who's been in touch? Wait, why would you want to know who has been in touch at five o'clock in the morning? But you're just drawn to it. Kevin, thank you for joining us today. The thoughts of Professor Kevin Curran as his fellow uh, academic uh, Dr. Tim Berners Lee uh reflects online about the ups and downs of his uh, creation uh, the internet 30 years ago uh, this week now